Hello everyone, this is Pastor Jordan again uh, for our third uh, week of looking at Joseph uh, during this pandemic uh, crisis. And so um, if you have been with us, uh, we've, as I just mentioned, been going through looking at the life of Joseph and there's much that we can learn, there's much we can apply, especially right now in the times that we're living in. Um, and so uh, if you've had an opportunity to watch the other videos, great. If you haven't, you know, I'd encourage you to go back and watch the others. Uh, but today we will be continuing on in that by looking at Genesis chapter 39, verses 1 through 23. Uh, just a couple, you know, quick little announcements. You know, if there's anything that you need, please uh, feel free to reach out to us. We'll be glad to, to help in the way we can. Um, I am praying for you, and I hope that uh, all is well. Um, and please, you know, again, reach out if there's anything that you would ha uh, have me to pray about. But... Um, uh, I'm praying for and hope that all is going well, and um, I'm glad that we can do this over uh, a video so that we can still uh, seek to, to grow together in Christ. But before we begin, let's go to him in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you again uh, for your love, for your grace. We thank you that we can gather together, although it might be through a computer screen, to come and to worship you, to learn more about you. And Lord, I pray that you would be with us now in this time of study, Lord, that you would open your scriptures to us, help us to understand your truth, help us to apply your truth, help us to love it and to grow in it. And I pray that you would be with each and every one of us now, we pray in Jesus' name. And so, again, our scripture passage today comes from Genesis 39, verses 1 through 23. So let us look together as we open God's word. Now Joseph had been brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, had bought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man, and he was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him, and he made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer in, the, in his house, and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had, in house and field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge, and because of him he had no concern about anything but the food he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance, and after a time his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, because of me my master has no concern about anything in the house, and he has put everything that he has in my charge. He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And as she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not listen to her, to lie beside her or be with her. But one day when he went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the house was there in the house, she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and got out of the house. And as soon as she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and had fled out of the house, she called to the men of her household and said to them, See, he has brought among us a Hebrew to laugh at us. He came in to me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. And as soon as he heard that, I lifted up my voice and cried out. He left his garment beside me and fled and got out of the house." And then she laid up his garment by her until his master came home. And she told him the same story, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you have, bought, have brought among us came in to me to laugh at me. But as soon as I lifted up my voice and cried, he left his garment beside me and fled out of the house. As soon as his master heard the words that his wife spoke to him, This is the way your servant treated me. His anger was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. The keeper of the prison paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's charge because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it succeed. The grass was the flower fade, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Amen. And so we see the story picks back up here as Joseph is now in Egypt. Um, he has gone from being the beloved son of Jacob to now being a slave. And we're told that he is sold to a man named Potiphar. And Potiphar uh, was the captain of the guard in Egypt. And so Joseph became one of his servants. Now what's interesting here is, you know, Joseph is brought to Egypt. And this is going to be the place where, you know, Joseph is going to spend the rest of his life. And his descendants will be there for over about the next 400 years. Um, but we'll see that as this story continues over the next few weeks. But here he has now been brought into Egypt working for this man named Potiphar. 
and it's interesting is Joseph must have had um, a big change of heart in the sense that we see that uh, his character, you know, we, we look back to before, you know, we can see him kind of probably being the spoiled kid a little bit, but now you see, you see a new Joseph in a way, and here this Joseph, uh, you know, he goes and he, he works uh, for Potiphar, um, and we find that everything that he does, it says that you know, the Lord was with him, and he, he made Joseph successful and everything he did well. Um, and Potiphar ends up taking notice of how well Joseph is doing, and so he ends up promoting him um, to being, you know, the overseer of the house. Um, everything is under um, Joseph's control. Um, Potiphar trusts him that much and sees how much God has blessed him um, in all that he has done, all he has succeeded with. And so you find that by the end of this, um, with the exception of uh, Potiphar's wife, you know, Joseph handles everything. That way, you know, as it says in verse 6, um, so he, talking about Potiphar, left all that he had in Joseph's charge. And because of him, he had no concern about anything but the food he ate. And essentially this is saying is, Potiphar trusted Joseph so much because Joseph succeeded so well because God was with him that the only thing Potiphar had to worry about was eating food. He understood that Joseph was taking care of the rest of the house and that all was good and all was well. Um, and, you know, we can kind of see kind of God shaping Joseph here. You know, later on, Joseph is going to um, help, you know, essentially run a country. And so now we can kind of see God working and helping him to grow in that as he blesses him um, while he works for Potiphar. But there will be a problem in this story. We're told that Joseph is handsome in form and appearance. And as he worked for Potiphar, uh, Potiphar's wife uh, began to have her eyes on Joseph. And so she approaches him and asks him to come and sleep with her. And uh, quite clearly, you know, Joseph could have easily given in to this temptation. But uh, we see here that he refused. I mean, he, he essentially told her that, you know, he, his master has put him in charge of everything in this house and um, that he is not going to do this. Um, it's, a, it's a great wickedness and a, a sin against God. Not only is he not going to do this to Potiphar, but, you know, this temptation here, it's a temptation to sin, to sin against God. And so he's quite clearly saying, no, I'm not going to do this. But this wasn't a one-time thing. She continued to pursue him day after day, but yet we're told that Joseph would not listen to her. He wouldn't, he wouldn't sleep with her and be with her. But sadly, we find that uh, tragedy strikes, and one day he goes into the house uh, to do his work, and it was just he and Potiphar's wife there, and so she grabs his, his garment and, and tells him to sleep with her, and uh, he runs off saying no, and uh, his garment ends up being you know, torn off, and so then realizing that... Um, the circumstance that she is in, she finds that she uh, she reverses it to make it seem like Joseph was trying to sleep with her, and so um, says that she calls out to, to the men of the house. Well, Joseph had you know fled from the house; he didn't want anything to do with her, um, and so you know she told the the folks that this Hebrew, you know, it's a derogatory term here used, I mean, and you know, saying that essentially that he did sleep with her, that uh, he forced himself upon her. If you do have children listening, I'm not going to use certain words here. Um, and that, you know, he ended up, you know, doing things that he shouldn't have done, uh, or so that she said. And so uh, it made it look like Joseph was the bad guy in this circumstance. And then we're told that she tells that same story to, to Potiphar. And because of this, um, we're told that his anger is kindled. Um, and so what ends up happening is Joseph gets thrown into prison. Now, it's interesting here that uh, for the crime that he's being accused of, that uh, Joseph doesn't suffer more. Um, it was actually told that, you know, if somebody were accused of something like this, that the punishment was actually a lot more severe. Um, normally, adultery was given with 1,000 blows, uh, and you know, rape um, was even more uh, severe, if, you know, if not execution. And so, the fact that Joseph being thrown in prison um, helps us kind of understand that maybe Potiphar doesn't quite believe his wife, but Joseph is still cast um, into jail anyway. Um, but if you notice, you know, in this circumstance, it seems very 
like he Joseph was doing well when things just you know had been bad they started to get better it's just like something bad happened again um, and now he has lost it all is now in prison and, but we're also told that the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Just as he had found favor in the sight of Potiphar, now he finds favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And everything that Joseph does there, um, he does well. And it cut to the point where he is put in charge of all the prisoners. Um, and whatever was done there, he is the one who ended up doing it. Because just as Potiphar had this uh, this keeper of the prison trusted Joseph just as much, because the Lord was with him. And we're told right there at the end uh, that whatever Joseph did, even though he's in prison, the Lord made it succeed. So what about us uh, today in this story? You know, what, what does this story have to teach us? Well, I think the, the big thing we have to see here is you know, all the twists and the turns in this plan. The Things start to get better, they get worse. Yet again, we have to remember here that God's got a plan for Joseph. As you know, we know the, the end of the story about how he's going to use this to bring to his people to save them into the land of Egypt. Um, we have to remember that you know God's got a plan in the good and in the bad times. And if we look at our life, um, you know we're going to have ups, we're going to have downs, we're going to have you know good times, we're going to have bad times. But we need to remember that you know God is still sovereign. God has got a plan. All things work together for our good, even though if we don't understand quite what he is doing in the situation that we're in. Because um, there are going to be times when we don't know what's going on. Right now, you know, in the world we look at, you know, what what is going on with this virus? When are we going to get back to normal? There's going to be questions we might have about, you know, what God is doing here. But um, we can trust that his plan is in motion. His plan will succeed, whatever that entails. And we can trust um, that he knows and will get us through whatever it is that we're going through, because he is the one that is in charge. Uh, now, another thing that we can learn from this is, is, is just a story about temptation. And you see this 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 woman here um, continuously trying to tempt Joseph to commit adultery. Um, but what does Joseph do? He, he, he rebukes uh, her advances um, time and time again. And, you know, if we look at our own lives and our own temptations, you know, it may be the temptation to adultery. I mean, but there may be other temptations that we face. Uh, temptations to lie, uh, temptations to, to steal. I mean, if just look, if you look at your life for a second, you know, what what do you find tempts you? Um, you know, the devil tempts us all in different ways because we all have different weaknesses in our sin. And we have got to be careful to, to avoid um, that sin, to overcome that temptation, to not give in. You see Joseph time and time again this woman, you know, comes to him, but every time he tells her, no. And, you know, there are times that sin continues to to come at us, doesn't it? Where, you know, it's not just a one-time deal, it's a continuous temptation. But as believers, we're called to to turn from that temptation, to say no, to fight against it. And uh, I was listening to one of our uh, ministers here at uh, in in the ARP and uh, this past Sunday, and he was talking about how, you know, sometimes when it comes to temptations, it's the fight or flight. Sometimes we can fight against it, but sometimes we, we need to flee from it. Just you see what Joseph does here. He flees from that temptation uh, to sin. And sometimes we've got to do that too. We've got to remove ourselves from a tempting situation, whether that be a bad influence, whether that be a, a, a bad environment, whatever that might be. You know, the temptation in our life, we have to be, be careful with it. And sometimes that means that we have to distance ourselves from it. Um, what about your situation? Is that something that you might need to do? Um, because we have to be careful. The devil is going to be constantly trying to cause us to stumble. And so we must you know, seek to, to not give in to that temptation to look to the Lord to help us with that. And this story, I mean, it, it reminds us that no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, that God is with us. You know, and that's the last thing that really we can see here is it's a difficult situation to try to, to overcome the circumstances of life uh, that we don't have control in, just like we see with Joseph's story here. Um, and, it, and it teaches us a lesson, you know, in, in how to do that. And that we need we need to appreciate that you know God is with us and trust that He hasn't abandoned us. You know, time and time again in this passage, it says the Lord was with Joseph, and even in the bad moments, God is still with him. And for us, we have got to remember this. 
that no matter where we are in life, our God is with us, caring for us, helping us. You know, it reminds me of the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. It reminds us when we're in our times of struggle and hardship, just like we see time and time again with Joseph, there is comfort in knowing that our God is with us, upholding us, strengthening us, that he, that he will not let these things overwhelm us. Yeah, and you know, things might happen in this world that might even take our life. And I think you know, sometimes we, we fear death, but even in that, if, we, if God is with us, then we have no reason to fear. You know, think about Jesus. His name is Emmanuel, God with us, because we have Christ who is with us always. There is no reason for us to fear. No matter what may happen in our life, if we have Jesus, then he is with us, caring for us, comforting us, preserving us, and he will be with us always, till the end of the ages, he tells us in the book of Matthew. And we can find comfort in that, in knowing that our Savior is and will always be with us, and he will bring us home to be with him whenever that time comes for each one of us. And so, no matter what your situation is, no matter what my situation is, you know, if we have trusted in Christ, then we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that He is with us always. And there is comfort and there is joy that can still be found in that. And there's one last thing that, you know, with this story that I would like to just, just touch on for a second is, you know, if you look at the story, it makes you can't help but think of Jesus in that. You know, you look at Joseph and he does nothing wrong in this circumstance. You know, he is innocent, but yet he still gets thrown in prison. If you look at Christ, you know, he was innocent, but yet he is still going to be crucified and killed. And if you look as well, you know, with, with, with Joseph, you see that he was tempted time and time again, but he didn't give in. You look at Christ, he is tempted by the devil time and time again, but he, but he didn't give in. So that he would live that perfect life for us, that by his righteousness would be given to us, and then our penalty would be paid on the cross by him. And so we see that even back here in the Old Testament, we see the gospel truth that points us to Christ. And so may this be a reminder to us that no matter where we are in the Bible, New Testament or Old Testament, we can still find the gospel right there speaking to us. Again, if there's anything that, that you are in need or someone you know is in need, um, please reach out to us. We'd be glad to help in any way possible. Church at gmail.com. If you've got my, my phone number, please uh, give me a call. Be glad to help in any way we can. Um, just to let you know again that you know I love each and every one of you, miss you, and I look forward to the, when we can come back together and gather together to, to learn together, to worship together, to, to grow together. But right now in this time, I pray that, that these videos have been helpful for each and every one of you. And uh, if you have any questions about it, please reach out as well. But uh, let us close as we go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you that you are a sovereign God, that you care for us, that you provide for us, and Lord, that we can look to you in our times of trouble and turmoil. Lord, be with each and every one of us now and the times that we are facing. Lord, may we remind us that you are in control, that you love us, that you care for us, and that you are with us. And Father God, help us to flee from our temptations. Help us to, to look to you for deliverance, to overcome our sin. And Lord, may we just find our hope in you, no matter the day, no matter the circumstance. Remind us that if we have you, we have all that we will ever need. Keep us safe, guide us, and keep us. And we pray that you will bring us together sooner rather than later, Father God. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Take care.